Hi guys, Alex here, here, Team Shady Graveler, and I'm here with the rest day five. Uh, we have had five training weeks, it's a Monday, so today is uh, another rest day, and uh, today's update will be in two parts. Uh, we'll have um, a travel update, and then we have the training update. So first I'll start uh, by sharing with you uh, the background on my desktop. Uh, most of my background, actually all my backgrounds on the computer are pictures that, pictures that I, I have taken or on my rides across uh, the country and maybe out of the country. This one today is uh, from uh, a little town called Mbita. And this is the bridge that joins Mbita, which is on the mainland, to an island called Rusinga Island. Beautiful place. If you ever get a chance to visit um, that part of Kenya in the Nyanza region, uh, please try and make it to, to, to Mbita. Uh, on uh, Rusinga Island, you have a, a nice expensive resort. I think it's called... Uh, Rusinga Island Lodge or something like that. Um, I would recommend if you have the money. I think it's like three, four hundred dollars a night or something like that. But really, really nice. And generally, the area, if you're a cyclist, exit trails all over the place. If you want to go to Mfangano Island, another place I recommend you to go. You have to come. You have to come to Mbita first and then take the ferry from there. Over here in the background of the bridge, uh, you can see a hill, it's called Gembe Hill. I've climbed it twice uh, on the bike. Tough climb. Uh, I think I made a, a video of it. I'll put the video in the description. Uh, have a look at it. A bit about this bridge, by the way. Uh, in the 80s, um, they, they used to have like a very the this the gap between the mainland and the island is maybe about two or three hundred meters and they used to have a ferry and i think some wise person decided why don't we just fill this channel up and put a causeway on it and that's what they did uh what they didn't know was that as much as that this this small gap is so short it was a vital channel to the circulation of water in the lake, particularly on the Kenyan side. So once they blocked this small channel, the lake on the Kenyan side pretty much went dead. Let me let me try and uh, explain it a bit more. Uh, here you go, maps. Uh, maps. Uh, sorry guys, I know I'm digressing, but this is just interesting information that might help you somehow. So, can you see, this is the lake, this is the Winam Gulf, it's called the Winam Gulf, this is the, uh, on the Kenyan side, this is the border, and this is the lake, the internal lake of, of Lake Victoria. And where we are, you see this Bitter Island Bridge? That's now this bridge. And this was where they blocked. And this small, short channel was vital to the circulation of water in this bigger area. So when they blocked this channel, this part of the lake pretty much died. And, well, the fish didn't die literally, but like their numbers reduced because the water became dead water it was it was there was no circulation so you can imagine if there's no circulation of blood in your foot what happens the foot dies yeah so that killed off this lake and it drove down fish stocks which i don't think they have recovered till now um and that's when it forced now kenyans 
fishermen to go out into the larger lake. Look at how big it is in Uganda and Tanzania. And that's when we started getting all these uh, Kenyan fishermen being arrested and stuff. But anyway, just because of this small channel here, this whole lake almost almost died. Yeah. So anyway, they did studies because once the fish started dying off and you know other other um, symptoms, they started doing studies to figure out what's going on. And they, and they found out that once this channel was blocked by the causeway, that's when everything began. So in the 90s, they dug up that causeway. They, they, they dug up the channel again. They allowed water to start flowing. And then they built this bridge. So this is the Rusinga Island Bridge. So that's a bit about um, this bridge. Yeah, And as I was telling you, you have here Gembe Hill. This is a hill. Uh, no, this is better. You see that beautiful climb up up here, Gembe Hill, and then you have Mpangano here. Beautiful ride around Mpangano. So if you are in that area, go check out the bridge, and uh, so and then here we have there. How is that Rusinga Island? It's somewhere here. Rusinga Island Resort or something like that. Oh yeah. No, it's not that one. The the resort is some Rusinga Island Lodge. Oh here it is. But it's not on that. Oh oh yeah, it's here here. This is a high, very high end uh, lodge. Look at how much it costs. 21,000. So that's 200 bucks a night. But I would say it's worth it. You have the money. Look at that. If you have the money. It's worth it. Anyway, that's just a side note. Okay, guys. Uh, two updates. One travel update and a training update. Let's start with the travel update. Next Monday, we have our visa appointments. These are the documents I'll be expected to present. A valid passport, check, I already have. Application form, check, I already have. Two passport photos, I think I have some. I have to look for them. Photos are not a problem. Travel insurance policy, check, I already have. Invitation letter from the event, I don't have an invitation letter. I have an invitation email, I hope that works. And uh, with the invitation email I have, I managed to get uh, uh, some form, a letter from the Federation through the efforts of uh, Mr. Macho Red. Mr. Macho Red, thank you very much for your connection. So I did get a letter from them. Uh, so hopefully that with the invitation, with the, with the invitation email from the event, that should suffice that. Thema bank statements, I have that. I don't know how happy they'll be with the money there, but I have that. Flight reservation, I have a flight reservation. So just quickly, I have reserved the flight for the 29th um, so that my event is on the 5th. <clears throat> so the flight is on the 29th. I'll arrive on the 30th. So I'll have 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th to get the bike, uh, get used to the bike, do some rides, get a feel of the cobblestones. Uh, I've been told the cobble, I mean, yeah, I've been told the cobblestones, if you've never ridden on them, it's a new experience. So, so anyway, I'll have at least four or five days. My event is on the 5th. Uh, we ride with the elite ladies and then the elite men ride on the 6th. So the edge groups are on the, on the 5th. So I live on the, uh, I, I plan to live on the 29th. On the 29th, we also have the Grand Nairobi bike race. Yeah. So the plan is to do the bike race in the morning. And then, um, and then uh, fly out in the evening. I might not have an update for you guys on the 30th. Yeah. Uh, understandably, because I'll be traveling. But I'll try, maybe just send a brief message or something. Okay. 
So flight reservation, proof of accommodation, I'm planning to get uh, an Airbnb or a booking.com um, hotel. Uh, that should help. All right, so that's the travel updates. Now we come to the training updates. I'm going to try and make it uh, very short. Um, training updates. Let's see. Here we go. So, again, we go to the figures. What does Strava say about uh, the training update? This is what Strava says. So, week one, 267. Week two, 392. Week three, 769. We really outdid ourselves in week three. Week four, 346. And week five, 283. So, but Strava says the training is consistent. Uh, it's happy. Uh, there's a good level for building or maintaining fitness. So uh, that's that's what it is. As you can see, the volume, yes, has gone down. Uh, two major reasons that I'll, I'll touch on a bit later. Uh, but yeah, that's what Strava says. Let's see what Training Peak says. And that's what Training Peak says. 52, 54, 64, 74, 78, and today morning, 82. So I try to take these out of the app every morning of the rest day uh, to give a good reflection of uh, where we stand. And as you can see, fitness has gone up again by four. Uh, fatigue has also gone up. Remember last week we dumped some, some fatigue, at least 10 fatigue, 10 points of fatigue. We have now added, and that's probably just because of the of the marathon, yeah. And also our form has gone down. So in terms of figures, both apps are saying that we are improving. Uh, that's much for it. All right. Uh, next, we go to our training log, and that's our training log for the week. You can see last week we did 194, this week 186. As I said, the volume has gone down. We had uh, eight activities uh, in six days, so that's not uh, too bad. Eight activities in six days. That means at least on a daily basis we have an activity. So apart from the rest day, yeah. So we had two structured sets on Wednesday and on Friday over here. And the rest were zone two rides, and then one uh, one marathon run. So the structured sets were pretty good. Um, this was the first one. Uh, I had uh, I had a set of uh, I had to hold two forty watts for about uh, uh, twenty minutes, and for me holding power like that anything above 220 watts becomes uncomfortable so that means it's out of my comfort zone that means we're training so and this is fatigued yeah so you see you really did some efforts here three efforts here yeah that was a, a, a tough one you can see what i said barely survived so that was one and then <clears throat> on friday the second structured workout this is a tough one because pre fatigue I held 340 watts for three minutes here. And then after fatigue, uh, I held 310 watts for five minutes. And actually, these other efforts, did I even? Oh, I didn't put these other efforts. This, this. You see, there were two efforts at FTP. So that was 260, 260, and then a, a free ride, yeah? So, so that was also a good structured workout. Whenever you see the weighted average above 200 watts, that means uh, that workout was, was uh, quite tough, yeah? So that's how the week looked in terms of cycling, yeah? Uh, now, for the highlights of the week yeah first of all 
before I go to the highlight of the week, I just wanted to mention. Remember, as you saw what Strava was saying, Strava was saying that, that the volume is going down. Yeah? When Strava is not saying, you can see that the volume is going down. And that's for two major reasons. Yeah? We started structured workouts here in week four. Before that, you see, we were just building, we were just building. So when you're building, you're just doing zone two rides. Zone two rides is easy. You just jump onto the, onto the bike, enter zone two, and then it's as long as you can go, three, four, five hours. So you can really get in uh, the time and the distance. It's easy. But once you start doing structured sets, you can't do structured sets for two hours. Yeah. So automatically that brings down your volume. Yeah. And as you can see, uh, this was the first week of doing structured sets. The volume came down. And this is the second week of doing structured sets. The volume came down. Uh, again, the other reason why you're using volume is because you're doing structured sets, you want to do them, you want them to be quality. Yeah. Quality means you're not attempting, like over here, open a new tab. Over here, I was not attempting to hold 240 watts. I was holding 240 watts. So in terms of training, those are two different things. Yeah. When you have a circuit set and it says do 240 watts for 20 minutes, you are you're benefiting more by being able to hold 240 watts and hold it for 20 minutes than struggling to to like hold 240 watts. So maybe you are like at 230, 235 and to reach to 240 is hard. Well, yeah, you're working out, but um, it doesn't count as what they normally say a quality workout, yeah? So you get benefits, yes, but not as much as if you are holding it for, for 240 watts. Because remember, these structured sets are supposed to have been structured to your specific requirements and your power levels. You, you've seen over here, uh, when, when you are get, going into Zwift and picking up these, uh, these uh, structured sets, they take into account your FTP. So all these zones are set based on your FTP. So it will be at 44%, uh, 9%, 8%, 30%. If my FTP was 240, I would have to hold less power. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, anyway. So yeah. So as I was saying, one of the reasons we are, we, are, we are reducing the volume is because now we are doing structured sets. And then the other reason we are reducing volume is because of this. Because of this. Fatigue, 31, 57, 95, 118, 101, 108. So your body is carrying more and more fatigue, meaning um, if you are, you are still trying to do a lot of volume, you're, you, you, you are, you're not being productive. Have you ever, those guys who use Garmin, have you ever done a workout and Garmin tells you it's this work, workout was unproductive that's what it means yeah so as you get more and more fatigue yes you have done another workout for five hours but the gain you've got out of it is not as much as if you're done a shorter workout or rested a bit more and then done that longer workout so anyway uh that's another reason why we are the volume is coming down because we are building up fatigue and then again, guys, remember, uh, when you're training, when you're fatigued, at, when your body's fatigued, you are more prone to injuries, yeah? So you have to be very, very careful uh, when you're training while, while you're fatigued. It's so, it's so easy to pull a muscle or, or a tendon or, or something like that. So that's another reason why the volume has gone down. Remember, I mentioned that I'll, I'll say something about it. So that's, that's the reason for it. Yeah. 
And I think that's it. So volume down, due to such a set and shorter, John rides, fatigue and injury. Yeah, so that's good. Okay, then it's progress. Okay. So guys, back to the highlight of the week. Nairobi City Marathon 2024. First, let me get two things out of the way. Yes, I was disappointed, but later that disappointment turned to not so much disappointment, and I'll explain why. So that's one. Two, it was a disappointment because I didn't hit the target time I wanted. I remember in the last update I said I'm targeting two hours. Well, we didn't get two hours, as you can see on the screen. We got 209. And what did we do last year? 209. So <laughs> we have maintained the same time. Yeah, so as I crossed the finish line and I looked at the time, I was really, really disappointed at that point in time. Uh, because I thought, yeah, maybe I don't, uh, maybe I won't hit two hours. Maybe I'll do a, a 205 or a 206 or a 207. But then you cross the finish line, you stop it, you stop the watch, and the first thing you see is that another 209. Man, that broke my heart. And I had to sit down for like 10 minutes to recover and think about life and the choices I make. That's on a lighter note. But yeah, guys, it was not the best of our feelings crossing that line. But then, when I got home and I looked at the stats and the figures, uh, I, it's the, the situation sort of changed. And I'm going to share this with you. And this is why I tell you guys, as much as, uh, yes, there's that, there are those purists who say, just go out there and run. You don't need to time. You don't need Strava. You don't need all this data you're collecting. Yes, there's, there's that level where you're just doing it for the pure joy of doing it. Then there's the other extreme where someone tracks every single gram they eat, every single breath they take. They have to know how many times I took up, how many breaths I took in a day. You know, like the other extreme, like now it's all data focused. If you don't have data, you are, it's like you're not alive. You have to find a balance in between because some data is important and to have some data about your workouts your training and activities can help you see something that your time doesn't tell you and and that's what happened in this case and i'm going to share with you yeah so the first uh thing uh, I want to say is, uh, let's see my notes. Uh, yeah. So the time to beat was two hours and nine minutes. And we didn't beat that time. Uh, last year, my pace was six or five per kilometer. This year was six or seven per kilometer. So last year, look, my moving time was two hours and nine minutes sharp. This year, my moving time was Two hours nine minutes and 29 seconds so we are actually 29 seconds slower <laughs> yeah if that counts for anything yeah um this race this marathon race yeah i have i can't say so much about it but uh one thing that uh i know affected me uh i think like on saturday lunchtime or friday evening um i don't know what it is i eat yeah but uh and my stomach was okay it was not like i had a bad stomach but i was bloated and i thought by saturday evening i once i sleep and wake up sunday morning i will feel much better but i didn't so like the whole race i was feeling so bloated i wasn't feeling comfortable running i think for me that was physiologically that was the 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 
one of the things that I would say I was not happy about. Um, if you look at the race analysis, look at the race analysis. Yeah. Yeah. Have we done with this? Yeah. And this. So look at the race analysis, guys. Yeah. Remember in my previous uh, updates, this is last year, this is this year. So you remember in the previous update, I told you last year I went out hard. Look, five minute kilometers. Look at that pace. Hard, hard, hard pace. Then at 10 kilometers, I dropped. And then I, this is all I could manage. While this year, it was a six minute pace. But you see, much more uh, managed, ma uh, manageable, yeah? And I almost kept it through uh, at, at that same pace. So I guess the trick now is to just reduce this pace to maybe like a, a better average from six to, to, to maybe 540. So last year, what helped me was I went out so hard that when now I died, all the time I had gained here, uh, compensated. While this year, I managed to keep a more consistent pace, but I still had uh, those stops. So you can see last year, my 10 kilometer was at 52 minutes. While this year, my 10 kilometer was at 56 minutes. So that's a difference of four minutes. That's almost another kilometer. Yeah. So in terms of race analysis, that's what it was. Uh, it was tough, I would say. Um, let me see. Okay, yeah. Now, here is where data can tell you more than what just the time can tell you. Check this out, guys. Boom. Look at that. And when I saw this, yeah, fine, I didn't hit the time I wanted, but when I saw this, at least this gave me a sense that all that I've been doing uh, is not wasted. So first of all, look at, this is last year, this is this year. The top is last year, the bottom is this year. First of all, Strava said last year, my effort was massive, 205. This year, it says my effort was just tough. One on one, like half. So Strava is telling you that this year you ran half as hard, but you did the same time. You see, even without looking at the heart rate in detail, already that's telling you that you are more efficient. It also tells you that this year you did not push yourself. Because that means last year, for it, the relative effort to be that hard, that means I really pushed myself. And, and I did. So five minute kilometers, for me, that's fast and tough. But then, you see what the, 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 the figures are telling you. Now, let's go to the heart rate analysis. Last year, most of my run was in zone three, tempo. Seven, 76%. Look at this year. 90% was in zone 2. And that's where you want your running to be. Because that means if you're running in zone 2, you should be able to run for 10 hours. As long as you're feeling and you're hydrating, you should run for 10 hours without a problem. The fact that last year I couldn't run in zone 2 and this year I did most of my runs in zone 2 tells me that my training is working. Because that means I'm building that base on which now I can improve. Now I can start bringing down my time. Right now I'm just building the endurance base. So you see, this, guys, so this is what I was trying to say that if, you, if, I, if I just looked at the time, oh, I did 209 last year and I've done 209 this year, no improvement. That means I've wasted training. I've been, my training has been ineffective, blah, blah, blah. That's one way of looking at it. But if you have a good smartwatch, 
not really smart watch, but a good sports watch, and you capture some data, these are the kind of insights that you can glean. That's the one they use. You can glean from, from, from these numbers. So yeah, as much as I hit the same time, I didn't improve. In the background, there's some good work going on. And I would say, I would say that is uh, my Nairobi City Marathon experience. I'll show you some of the pictures. That's the medal. Did I show you the medal? There's the medal. Beautiful medal. Quite, quite heavy and it looks nice by the way. I'm glad that uh, I managed to get the medal. That's the medal. That's the start. These are the pace setters. The, the, pace, uh, the pace setters. So if you want to run a 145, you stick with this guy. If you want to run a, a 230, you stick with this person. If you want to run a two hour, you stick with this person. This first person, I'm not sure what time they were running, but it's definitely faster than all these others. Yeah. So maybe the first bus is just someone going at a pace as fast as they can. So I don't know how much it took. So at some point in time, I, one, when we started, these guys went a bit ahead, but like after about five, six kilometers, I caught up with them and I managed to hang with them until 10 kilometers. And after 10 kilometers, I stopped for uh, water. And that's when, uh, when I looked up, they had gone and catching them was a bit difficult. And I said, finishing is more important than trying to catch them. Otherwise, if I, if I try to catch up with them, I might have blown up and not be able to finish. So those are the pace setters. Uh, what's this? This is the start. That's going up. Uh, that's going up uh, onto the expressway. It was pretty cool go running on the expressway. Yeah, so there we go. We go on the expressway. That's the turnaround uh, on Moyakwe after Westlands. So 42 kilometers went straight, 21 kilometers turned around. Respect to these guys. The, the marathon guy. <laughs> but when I grow up, yeah, I want to reach the marathon. Beautiful views all over from the expressway, as you, those guys who use the expressway know. So it was pretty cool running on the expressway. This is, this is just after the 10 kilometer point. So this is just water guys have poured down as they're drinking. The, the 10 kilometer lady, it was a lady who was doing the, the, two, the two hour piece setting. The lady was somewhere here. I don't know if you can see. It's hard to see the flag. I think it's somewhere here. Yeah, so this is where I lost them. What do we have here? Okay, this is the turnaround near, this is the Southern Bypass, Airtel, um, what's that hotel called, this hotel, whatever, Emara something hotel, so <clears throat> four kilometers from here to the finish, uh, and here we go, we cross the, we cross the, the finish line, and that's me with my medal. Yeah, pretty cool, guys. So, and we meet some more shady characters. And these shady guys are also pops. They know why they are pops. There's one and a half pop missing from here. But yeah, I bumped into them. Uh, they are yet to graduate to the half marathon. Both of them did, I think, 10 kilometers. But they are fast. They ran four and a half minute kilometers so the next marathon actually is uh october uh let me see uh, the next marathon is october 27th the stanchard marathon so if you're out there and you want to try uh see if you can run uh sign up for the 10 kilometer and see how that goes you have 
over a month to, to train. Yeah. Okay, so those are the popes. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, that's just me blabbering. Anyway, so yeah, guys. One special highlight. Special highlight of uh, of uh, my marathon. At around kilometer four five, some guy runs past me and turns around and says, "Hey, by the way, I love your channel. Great content. Keep it up." And I'm telling you, I almost stopped to hug him. I, I even like I was so caught up in that, you know. This doesn't happen to me all the time. And sometimes it happens when I'm uh, sometimes it happens when I'm with cyclists then of course another cyclist it's easy for another cyclist to to know me because it's niche yeah so we are all in the cycling basket so like I know most of the other cycling YouTubers <clears throat> but here we are on a run with about 10,000 people running and someone comes up as he's passing you and says, great channel, I'm a subscriber. And that really touched me. And I want to thank you so much. I forgot to ask you your name. If, if you watch this video, please leave your, 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 your name uh, in the comments. And, uh, and I'll reach out. And thank you so much uh, for being a subscriber and for patronizing the channel and please share the channel with with other guys so that was a moment that really touched me thank you so much as i said please if you watch this video please put your name uh, i forgot to ask you your name put your name in the comments and uh, we'll we'll try and connect and for the other guys who are here i want to stress this thank you so much for for supporting me and the channel by subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please just click the subscribe button. Uh, and on if you watch a new video and you haven't liked it, just like, like it. What that does, it helps um, the algorithm pick up uh, to see that, okay, this channel is being watched a lot in Kenya or in Nairobi or in East Africa and it tries to recommend it to other people so it really really helps the channel i want to i want to try and monetize the channel i haven't managed to monetize the channel let me show you guys um i'm stuck i'm stuck uh here we go here we go here we go hold on so here let me show you guys uh, here we go. We are at one one thousand one hundred ninety one uh, subscribers, and if I come here, earn, you can see eligibility. There are three criteria. So one is the number of subscribers that I've already reached. That they used to be a thousand, they dropped it to to five hundred. Um. So three upload, upload videos in the last 90 days, that's easy. I can upload one every week. So that's easy. This is the one that still beats me. 3,000 public watch hours. So you can see like in the last 100 days, I've only done 705. Yeah. So if you can get a bit more subscribers and you guys help out by liking the channel, it will reach out to more people. More people will view the content. And hopefully, that will get us more uh, public hours, uh, public view hours. And hopefully, we can hit, we can we can get um, monetized. I want to get monetized. And earn, I, I know the, the, the earnings is not something that can sustain a livelihood. But at least it can pay for my cycling. Like now... Instead of me having to fundraise uh, um, to go to, to Belgium, the money from this could have easily catered for some of that. So, guys, please, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. 
every video you watch, please just click on the like button. If you have friends of yours who like sports uh, and consume this kind of content, share the channel with them. Uh, leave it up to them whether you want to subscribe or not, but at least give them the opportunity. By You can share a video and say, hey, look at this video. If you, if you like the content, subscribe or like. Sour. And I'll appreciate. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys, so much. So anyway, guys, I think I've come to the end. I've talked quite a bit. I've come to the end of the of my update. Um, okay, the background has changed again. This picture was taken somewhere in the Mau Forest. Yeah. There's a, there's a, what's the name of that? There's a famous tea factory up there, Kiptagich. Kiptagich. It was taken around Kiptagich tea factory. Um, I did a ride there with uh, Troy and uh, who else? Oh, Mr. Wire Wire, Patrick Willie, uh, and who else? Um, Stig. Um, and who else? And who else? It's been a it's been a while, guys, and I'm old, so sometimes I I forget. Beautiful. It's a road that people don't know about. It's a road that joins uh, Molo to Momet, and it runs through Mau Forest. Yes, believe it or not. Have you ever heard of a town called Olenguruoni? That's where you get that town. And uh, this, um, this, um, oh yeah, Niyule Yule. <laughs> we, we are with Niyule Yule also. Um, so this is, there's tea, like on the edge of the forest. You have tea and you have the Kiptagich tea factory. And that's where this picture was taken. Another beautiful part of Kenya that people don't go to. Uh, I made a video about that, right? I'll link it in the description. So, guys, coming back to that, uh, um, coming back to that uh, watching videos and liking videos, I'm going to link two videos down in the description. One of Gembe Hill. Remember I told you about Gembe Hill, the one that's near Mbita and Rusinga? Please watch it and like it. And I'm going to link the video of um, my Mao ride. Uh, also, please watch and like. That can be the beginning uh, of uh, us getting to 3,000 3, hours. Sour guys. So anyway, I just wanted to mention that. Last but not least, before I go. Training week 6 starts tomorrow. And as I told you, um, going forward, it's a set structure, two structured workouts and two zone two rides. Yeah, I'll try and make the zone two rides a, just a bit longer, uh, just to make up on the volume. But pretty much that's going to be the, 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 the structure. I might even contemplate maybe doing something very light or resting on, on one day because if I'm riding on four days, so we have seven days, one day is a rest day, Monday, so I have six days, uh, two structured workouts and two um, zone two, those, those are four days, so I'm left with two days. On one day, I will do a physical ride, so I'm left with one extra day, and on that extra day, I can try and either swim, which I haven't done, and I, I'm not happy about that. I can either swim or I can rest all together and start clawing back that fatigue yeah so that can actually from week two and three of so from training week six and seven training week seven and eight i'm gonna do that i'm gonna rest one extra day so training week six that is starting tomorrow i'll still keep it up then Training week seven, because training week eight will take me towards the end of the month when we have the, the the Great Nairobi bike race. And for that, I will try and rest. So maybe two days, I, I, I won't try it. 
anyway, we'll see how it goes. But guys, at the end of this week, on Sunday, we have a gravel race. It's the Sule Kangani Memorial Gravel, as you can see. The last two editions have been held in uh, Kajiado, but they've decided to bring it a bit closer, make it more accessible. So it's going to be at the Kilimo Grand Resort. Uh, at uh, the races are at nine, people are uh, expected to be there by eight. Uh, this one's 48 kilometers. They have not put the climbing, and uh, I understand Alex is the one who's doing this route. And Alex, please don't even think of putting those crazy elevations that you normally put. This is a gravel race, not a mountain bike race. So I will expect something between a thousand and a thousand two hundred. Uh, that should be enough for a gravel race yeah um so yeah guys the entries are still open uh you can see the details there it's 2000 bob the deadline is 13th today is what 9th so you still have some time uh let's see you at the start line sule kengangi was a special guy unfortunately we lost him two years ago he died in a I think it's a gravel bike accident, actually, racing in the U.S. So every year we have two or three events um, in his honor. We have uh, one that was just held this past weekend in Eton. And the other one that bears his name is uh, this one, the, the gravel race. Um, that, you know, is the pioneer of gravel in, in Kenya, gravel racing. So, gone but not forgotten, Sule, we remember you. Anyway, guys, um, that's it. Um, okay, the background has changed. This is not cycling related, but I took this picture in Bermuda. <laughs> I found myself in Bermuda somehow. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and a friend took me out on a sailing boat. I love sailing. I mean, I've not sailed much, but I think it's one of those things that I would enjoy extremely. Hey, DC, I know you sail. Take me out on one of these sailing uh, trips of yours, maybe in Ivasha or somewhere. I'd love to sail. So, yeah, so this was taken in uh, Bermuda. Nice place. Um... I avoided the Bermuda Triangle. That's why I'm here still talking to you guys. But yeah, somehow I found myself in Bermuda one day. So anyway, guys, on that note, again, thank you for the support. A lot of you have reached out in one way or another. Uh, also, like on my uh, Strava Marathon uh, uh, run, a lot of you guys have given me so many positive messages thank you for your support i really appreciate uh next monday uh, i will hopefully have uh i will have an update of the race and hopefully i'll have some positive update on the visa appointments till then stay tuned and stay shady i'm alex and i'm out cheers all right guys how do we stop this?